Hello, and welcome to the Quiet and Strong podcast, especially for introverts. I'm your host, David Hall, and the creator of QuietAndStrong.com. This is a weekly podcast dedicated to understanding the strengths and needs of introverts. Introversion is not something to fix, but to be embraced. Normally, we'll air each episode on a Monday, and be sure to subscribe on your favorite platform. So this week, I made two different calls to the same doctor's office. And I had two very different experiences. For the first one, I had a question about my bill. I did go to the website first, as probably most of you introverts might do, but I didn't get my question answered that way, so I called. And the person answered the phone pretty quickly, which is always good. Nobody likes to wait on the phone. She was very friendly from the start. She nicely explained my situation, let me know what the insurance had paid, and listened to any concerns that I had. And it was just nice the way she, you know, offered to take payment and made sure I had all my questions answered and all that kind of good stuff. You know, I pay most of my bills online, but in 2021, it's still crazy that not every doctor's office takes online payments. And just throughout the conversation, she was very friendly and helpful. At the same time, we got right down to business and she took care of what I needed in a very efficient way. Then later that day, I was looking at my calendar to prepare for the next couple of weeks and I realized I had a conflict with an appointment with the same doctor. So I called back and this time I selected a different phone option for scheduling and I had a different representative and a very different experience altogether. From the start, there were very long and awkward pauses. Of course, I can be sympathetic to this, as I probably have had awkward pauses myself. But these were extra long, and they continued throughout the whole conversation. And they just, they just were longer than usual, with no explanation. And I don't know, maybe the person was having an off day, but it was strange. And then I tried to tell the person a funny story about why I needed to change my appointment. But my funny story was just met with silence too. And then it was strange she was trying to convince me to go to a different location when I was telling her that wasn't even an option for me. In the end, I did end up getting what I needed, but the service was not great. You know, I don't know if this second person was an introvert or extrovert. But it did remind me that understanding yourself can help you give better service, as I've learned over the years. And it can really be helpful, whether you work for yourself or somebody else, to understand the different needs of introverts and extroverts when it comes to giving excellent customer service. And really finding out what the customer customer wants and needs. So I have a favorite convenience store that I think provides excellent service. It's nice and clean, it has a nice selection of products, but what I really love is I can get in and out quickly. I actually drive past a closer store that I don't have such a high opinion of to go to this store. When it comes to customer service, the employees at this store are always very friendly, speedy, and efficient. I was talking with a small group at work about how I think this store is a great example of customer service. An extroverted colleague didn't agree. She said she felt too rushed at this store. She wanted to feel more of a connection with the employee. More connection? More connection at the convenience store? As an introvert, that seemed funny to me. I don't enjoy small talk for its own sake and definitely prefer deeper conversations. I like friendliness in my interactions, but I'm not planning on forming any type of long-term relationship with the employee at the store. But an extrovert sees every interaction as a type of connection, whether or not they're going to have any future interactions with that person. So whether you're giving or receiving customer service in any type of business, the difference between introverts and extroverts is something to consider. What does the customer want? Some customers are going to want to make small talk and some are going to appreciate being served in a speedy manner 
as they either don't need or don't want conversation just for the sake of talking. You know, whether I'm getting my oil changed, eating at a restaurant, checking out at the grocery store, or even getting my hair cut, I'm less interested in the conversation and appreciate prompt, courteous, speedy, and efficient service. Where an extrovert might feel slighted by the same service I perceive as efficient. So how do you give great customer service? You need to definitely be adaptable and able to read what the particular customer needs at the time. As an introvert, when I'm working with clients, I know I'll still need to make some small talk and connect to my customers as the situation warrants. After all, it's about serving the customer and making sure that they feel their needs are met. As far as being the customer myself, I'm going to have preferences. And as I said, I'm willing to drive past one store to get to the one that provides the service I appreciate. Understanding your customers and being able to meet his or her needs for a meaningful interaction or efficiency is key to providing the level of customer service that your customer will appreciate. Customers want to be heard, understood, and feel cared for. You may need to make some small talk. Just some customers might want more than others. The topic of small talk is an important one of this podcast, and it's definitely something that we have discussed and we will continue to discuss. And with a little understanding and practice, you can get better at it as an introvert. You may enjoy some, and you may do some as a necessity. For one thing, you should always greet people with a smile. Even on the phone, they say that they can see you smiling. Of course, if you're in person or a virtual setting, a smile is important along with regular eye contact. If you're in a virtual setting, be sure to look into the camera to maintain eye contact. You'll also need to listen to understand what the customer needs. Some might say that introverts are great listeners. And what I say, not necessarily. It's something you have to work at, whether you're an introvert or extrovert. If you're an introvert and someone's talking excessively, just because you're not speaking doesn't mean you're listening. Silence doesn't automatically equal listening. So be sure you're paying attention to what the customers say. And also be sure you're not the one talking excessively and that it is a conversation and that you're both listening to each other. I need to remember that I am listening and not making the conversation about me. I'm hearing what the other person's saying and not only thinking about what I'll say next. I definitely have a bad habit of matching the person's story with one of my own. Often this takes away from what they're trying to tell me. It also helps me to focus on the person when I maintain eye contact. Not a stare, but looking at the person regularly. Try not to interrupt. It's a hard one for me. I'm always thinking, and if someone is talking about something that I've given much thought to, I naturally want to share my ideas. I have to be careful to let the other person feel heard and let them fully express their thoughts before I jump in. It's also important to ask questions and clarify. I'm very good at asking questions. I see connections between people and things, and I want more information. I do need to be careful to not come off as an interrogator and often let the person know that I have a few questions for them so that I can help understand what they need and how I can help. Also, in all my questioning, I need to make sure this includes some clarifying questions so that I do understand the other person's point of view. As introverts, we need to keep in mind that we think and then we speak. So we need to acknowledge when we're thinking and when we need a second or two or more to think about something. I'm not sure what was going on in the poor customer service example from the doctor's office, but it would have been helpful if the person would have said, hey, let me look that up, or other things like that, and she wouldn't have needed to say anything while she was doing that. I've gotten better at this myself, 
as an introvert through my own experience trying to give great customer service. I remember talking on the phone with a client, and she was just starting to get into her story that I was listening to. She started saying, are you there? Are you there? I, of course, assured her that I was listening to her. I've learned that especially when talking to those that are uncomfortable with silence, it's necessary to just throw in there, yeah, I'm listening, or maybe an okay from time to time. And for those uncomfortable with silence, I need to tell them when I need a moment while looking up some information. I tend not to talk while I'm doing that, and this can make some people uneasy. Sometimes I may ask to put them on hold if I think I need to take a minute or so. If the situation is very complex, I may ask to get back to them and come up with a reasonable time that I can do that. And just, you know, it's important to let them know that you're on their side and you're going to come up with what they need or solve the problem that they have. And then when you feel like you've come up with your best solution, share it with them and clarify that it does solve the problem for them. Also, be present and limit distractions. As an introvert, it's easy for our minds to wander, and so we need to make sure we're in the moment with the person and not somewhere else. Also, part of this is not checking our phones, our emails, etc. Not trying to multitask. That never really works. You may want to close the door if you have one, or if not, take some other steps to interrupt to minimize distractions and interruptions. And in addition to smiling and eye contact, use their name as appropriate as it helps people feel important. And appreciate them. I don't know, does being an introvert have anything to do with giving appreciation? I'm not sure, but I do know, as introverts, we think far more than we ever say. And while I haven't always been forthcoming with appreciation of others, I know I've often felt unappreciated or at least underappreciated myself. But those times when I do get a little appreciation, it definitely makes my day. So make the customer's day. Let them know that you really appreciate them for being a customer. As human beings, we want to know that we're making a difference that our hard work is noticed and that somebody cares. But more often, people notice the opposite. I've observed in business that customers are likely to complain more than they give praise. It seems that often people only mention when things go wrong and don't acknowledge the hundred things that went right. So be sure to appreciate the things you can about your customer. And then when you are the customer, be sure to take time to appreciate those serving you. Or try to use the words thank you often and use them sincerely. Try to acknowledge people for a job well done. So how do you like to communicate? Over the years, I've learned that as an introvert, talking on the phone is not my preferred method of communication. However, there are strategies to be successful and thankfully, several other options that make talking on the phone less of a necessity. I think I prefer email and text. In-person and virtual meetings definitely have their place, but I think that email and text are nice because I like to think about what I need to say. I can get right down to business and not engage in a lot of unnecessary small talk. People don't worry about any silence where I'm taking time to think. But I still talk on the phone plenty, both professionally and personally. Sometimes talking on the phone is the other person's preferred method of communication. And you really need to work to give the customer what their preference is. Or sometimes particular conversations need some back and forth dialogue that would take too long over emails and texts. Emails can definitely be easily misinterpreted and certain conversations may be better by phone. And of course, sometimes an in-person meeting is the best. In 2020 and into 2021, we've had to replace in-person meetings largely with virtual meetings. And virtual meetings have their advantages. 
but sometimes there's no better way to connect than to meet in person. I'm hoping that we can have more in-person interaction soon. Yes, said by an introvert who needs some connection. Introverts and extroverts have different needs when it comes to customer service. I know I'm looking for someone to smile, use my name to make me feel important, and to be a creative problem solver for me. I know I may not want as much small talk as an extroverted friend might. However, I may need to indulge in a bit more conversation with an extroverted customer. Extroverts need to understand when small talk is wanted and when listening is needed. An introvert may be thinking before speaking and may need time to think about things. This is another application of understanding the communication differences of needs of introverts and extroverts. Keep in mind, if you're an introvert, you still need to understand other introverts. And the same goes for extroverts talking with other extroverts. So whether you work for yourself or work for somebody, you can give great customer service by understanding personality types. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to further connecting with you. Email me at david at quietandstrong.com. Check out the quietandstrong.com website. I'll add social media channels to the show notes. Please comment on social media posts related to this podcast. Send me topics or guests you'd like to see on the show. There's so many great things about being an introvert, and we need those to be understood. Get to know your introverted strengths and needs and be strong.